Hello everyone, this is David, Fairly Secret Music. Um, today I am going to do an unboxing. My friend Ryan gave me uh, four boxes of stuff that he had what I call remaster placed. So basically you have the old version, you get the remastered, and he doesn't need the old version because he likes the remastered versions better. So he's been sitting on this stuff, not knowing what to do with it, and he finally was like, hey, I have a bunch of stuff that you might like that I've replaced with remastered versions, so um, come on over and get it. And he wasn't going to charge me anything, uh, but I decided that, wasn't cool so I was like I'm gonna buy you stuff um, so I ended up getting him the five Bebop deluxe uh, two CD remasters uh, and remix so um, and you're probably saying well didn't Glenn give you a bunch of stuff and you didn't pay him uh, Glenn is has given me a list of vinyl to get so I am on the look for stuff that he would dig um, and uh, before I start doing the unboxing, and this is basically what each of the boxes looks like. Um, this is actually the smallest box. Um, so, uh, but before I get to those CDs, I want to uh, talk to you about Nick Prol and the Proletarian's Luna Attic. Um, so Nick sent me this a few months ago. Uh, several months ago, actually, and I just have not had the time to um, get around to reviewing it. And I'm not really good at a rev as a reviewer. Um, it's not my strong point. Um, but uh, that being said, this is odd progressive rock. Um, I hear elements of Sleepy Time Grill Museum, uh, Captain Beefheart. There is actually some elements of uh, Jellyfish on one song, which really surprised me. Um, they have a new album out, and I believe both things are live or streaming available on Bandcamp. So you can go check them out. And uh, <clears throat> so if, if Sleepy Time, uh, Captain Beefheart, uh, jellyfish, uh, a lot of other things, kind of, uh, very, very odd kind of prog, some very discordant, some very melodic. Um, it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea, but give it a shot. You might like it. This album has a lot of guest musicians on it. So I am curious to see what their new album sounds like. Um, some key players that are, you know, people that I knew about is Bob Drake, um, Mo Stiano, I think that's how you pronounce his last name, Gavin Wallace Ellsworth. Mo is from Sleepy Time. Uh, Gavin is from Bent Knee. Uh, Bob Drake, I believe, was is part of Thinking Plague. I'm not sure. And there's a lot of other people that whose names are not familiar. One thing with having this many guests is um, I'm curious as to what the band sounds like with just them on their own. So I believe the new album is more of just the band rather than having quite as many guests and things on there. So that will be interesting to hear. So check those guys out, Nick Prohl and the Proletarians, Loon Attic. All right, let's get into this unboxing of um, just crazy stuff. He did give me uh, notes on these. So this is the Prague Rejects 80s and soundtracks on the side. I've already actually taken those out. So we're just going to look at his Prague Rejects. This is stuff that he thought he would be into, but realized that even though musicianship might be good, it's just not something that he's going to listen to a lot. Um, I didn't look through any of these boxes yet, but, um, this is um, one that I did see as I was putting them in my car. Um, Magma, Babino, and 
this is actually one of the few Magma CDs that I don't have. Uh, I don't know why I never got this. Uh, it's 80s Magma, which is very, um, very different than 70s Magma. Um, you just have to hear the to tell, to tell the difference. And like I said, Ryan said, you know, they're great musicians, but it's just not something I would listen to. Thank you so much because this this alone is worth the price. I know you said, yeah, whatever. Um, I don't know if I have this. I have a 12 disc Magma Live box set, and this is from uh, 76. I will have to actually look and see the difference between some of this stuff. Um, Magma Concert 75. 71. I want to say this is something else that I do not have. I'm not sure. These are very odd things to get as um, kind of your intro to Magma because um, they're, you know, the studio albums to me, really capture what Magma is all about and stuff like that. And it's just, sorry, I'm going to try to get this closer to y'all so you can actually see the CDs. Maybe not. Who knows? Um, but yeah, the, uh, the studio albums are the shit. Um, retrospective, I do have this in one of those box sets. I think it's cool to have it in one of these versions though. So far, I'm keeping everything that's in here. Um, Dijam Carré. Uh, this is an instrumental band who are on cuneiform. Are they on cuneiform the whole time? Actually, I don't think they're on cuneiform at this point. They're on a different label, maybe their own label. Um, and if you're asking, ah, he kind of knew, because I started and stopped this video, so I uh, I was having really bad issues with lighting and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, so these are awesome. Uh, I've been interested in this band, but um, they have a bunch of these at Cheapo, and it's... Uh, a lot better if I can check them out without having to worry about if I'm going to pay a bunch of money for them. So I think they were like eight bucks or something like that. Um, I mean, uh, my friend Brandon, ah, this is where they're on cuneiform. My friend Brandon dug them, and uh, my manager, uh, John. Now we're getting into bands that I have no idea. Salem Hill. The, what does that say? The Robbery of Murder. This is awesome. So this is Platypus. This has um, John Moyoung, uh, Ty Tabor, uh, Rod Morgenstein, and Derek Sherinian. And I've been on the lookout for the this one and the second one. Um, so... What happened was they formed this supergroup, Platypus, and then when Derek Sherinian left, they changed their name to Jelly Jam and put out a few more. I have the Jelly Jam stuff, but uh, I do not have either of these Platypus. So that is, so far, this is like, this is perfect. This is awesome. Um, let's see, what do we got here? British progressive rock recommended for fans of Genesis, Merlion, and yes, multi-story East West. I've never heard of this band before. Never heard of them. Um, let's see. I think this is Pilgrim's Journey. The or they're called Jeremy. I'm not sure because if you look at the spine, it says Jeremy, and then it says Pilgrim's Journey. But the way they have it. On there, I would think the band's called Pilgrim's Journey. 
let's see. Yeah, this is very confusing because it's like, who is Jeremy or, oh, all music composed by Jeremy. There he is. That would make sense because there is another CD by Jeremy, Celestial City. Doesn't he know this should go above the title and the title should go on the bottom? That's really bad, um, bad art design. Phonia, what is that called? The perfect cosmological what? Principle. No idea who the hell that is. Um, Ken Watson's Assembly. I do like this cover. It's like a face if you look at it. This is where I stopped before when I was doing these videos um, with my shitty lighting. Yeah, this... He said there's a lot of instrumental prog in here. So there might be a few things that I keep, a few things that I get rid of. You never know. I'm kind of a hoarder, kind of whore for uh, CDs. Like, part of me is like, well, if I get rid of it, then what if down the line I'm just like, shoot, I really wish I had that. This is a band called Ring of Myth. Never heard of that band before. He was really um, trying out a lot of prog in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, this is a band called However. Never heard of them. He did say these are the rejects. Eric Nordlander, Threshold. And Eric Nordlander, for some reason, I always, yeah, I have no idea who this guy is. Here, I'll show you the cover. No idea who that is. That first pile started super strong. Oh, Hayes, in the end, 78 to 88. I've heard of this band, I've just never checked them out, or if I did check them out, I don't remember what the heck they sounded like. So that is super sweet. Ah, Discipline. Unfold Like Staircase. I do have this. This, I believe, has vocals also. Let me find out. Yep. Yeah, this, this is an interesting band. They um, kind of have that 80s King Crimson feel to them. Uh, in times, I don't remember a lot about, I've only listened to the album like three, four times or something like that, but most of my listening was way back in when it came out. Claus Schultz, that name is super familiar, but I am, it's just not ringing a bell, um, what he was part of. Prague Rejects. For Ryan, that is. All right, let's see. We'll start on this end. Oh, this is awesome. National Health. So National Health is Dave Stewart. Um, Bill Bruford actually played on some National Health stuff. Um, wow, this is super awesome. Two-disc set with this huge booklet of um, liner notes and stuff. So you had Dave Stewart, Phil Miller, Neil Murray, and Pip Pyle. And if you're not familiar with who Neil Murray is, he played with Gary Moore. He did play with Bruford uh, before their first album. Um, I think he played with, um, I want to say he played with Ozzy for a while. I'm not sure though. No, Whitesnake. Uh, so on the first track on here, you have Phil Miller on guitar, Steve Hillage from Gong, Dave Stewart on keyboards, Alan Gowan on electric piano, um, Mont Campbell on bass, and Bill Bruford on drums. That is super sweet. This is, this is awesome. There's a lot of great Canterbury players on here. Sweet. 
Look at this picture. Look at that. Little Bill Bruford right there. He did not last long with National Health, but um, Dave Stewart went on to play on all of the Bill Bruford um, or Bruford solo albums, which was technically a band. <sighs> this is awesome. I don't know when this is from, but this has John Greaves on bass who played, um, I believe, with... Henry Cow, another health, National Health. I did not have that. Those are two fantastic additions. Um, Jade Warrior. I'm familiar with this band name, um, but I don't know who is in this. Let's find out. Anybody still watching pretty much is like, Oh, God, that was blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Because nobody is going to watch this far into the video and not have some interest in Prague. Osric Tentacles. They are a band that I've never even checked out. I think they're kind of like a proggy jam band. Some more Osric Tentacles. Oh, don't tell me you got Osric Tentacles live stuff. It's that weird magma um, thing. Holy shit, look at this. This is their mail order list from April 93. You could... What is that? I wonder if those were cassettes. But then they have... CDs, I believe, in here. That's pretty cool. And there's the order form. This one actually looks like an official kind of bootleggy thing. It looks kind of weird, but it looks like an official CD. Oh, some more Osric tentacles. It looks like we're getting to so some studio albums this is the album that actually i did i did listen to this way back in like 98 or something like that when did this come out came out in 91 yeah i'm very interested in seeing what that sounds like oh my gosh the griffin or griffin collection i wonder if this has everything from um Red Bishop whatever to Queen or whatever. I can't remember what it what it's called. I have one or two Griffin uh, CDs. There's one that is all instrumental, and it's more of their kind of rocky side. <laughs> Golgotha. Um, that guy looks creepy. Symphony in Extremis. This looks like weird prog metal. Oh my god. Everything is first, second, third, and fourth movement. That's going to be horrible. Uh, another Golgotha. Looks like with like a Cthulhu Mythos kind of thing on there. Four songs and the shortest one is 9 minutes and 27 seconds. Quasar, Fire in the Sky. That's interesting. I just saw this used about two months ago at one of the Cheapo Records. I was interested in what it sounded like. I cannot remember what it did sound like, though. I'm going to uh, kind of get this closer here. I want it, like, right there. Let's see if I can't get it right there. Annoying. Another Quasar. I'm not familiar with what this band sounds like. I cannot remember what they sounded like. Dark Ether Project. I remember this because there was a stick player. Um, 
Adam Levin. And I can't remember who had this. I think my friend Brandon had this at one time. Interesting. Brian Hirsch, Quest for Truth. Not sure what that is. Oh, Royal Hunt. They, I think, are one of those bands that was like on Magna Carta. Yep, because the next album is Royal Hunt Paradox. My dog just plopped down upstairs. I don't know if you could hear that. Um, Magna Carta bands are pretty hit and miss. Um, out of them, I would say, like, um, uh, what are they called? Enchant. Enchant were pretty good. Um, there was a um, Michael Manring CD. Another Royal Hunt. I have a feeling he didn't enjoy Royal Hunt. Well, these are his prog rejects. Craft. Hmm. I have never heard of this band. Let me... That's right. He said there's going to be a lot of instrumental prog in here. Craft. Now. Everything is different now. I've never heard of that band. Oh. Another Ozark Tentacles. And this is one of their studio albums. Sweet. I'll be interested in hearing, if, seeing if I like Ozark Tentacles because I've heard about them for so long. Some more Ozark Tentacles. And some more Ozark Tentacles. Grey Lady Down, The Crime. That looks like they're a band that thinks they can be the next Genesis for some reason. Grey Lady Down again. And Ashra Temple. It's a bad lighting there. I'm familiar with Asher Temple, but do not remember what they sound like. So that is the Prague, um, what do you call it? The Prague Rejects box. I should probably go through this next one a lot quicker because this next one is even bigger. So I'm gonna go through this as fast as possible. What side do I choose? This is Prog Pop, Electro, Funk, Europop, Alt Rock, etc. What could be in it? All right, I'm gonna start on this side. Nick Kershaw, heard of him? Don't remember ever hearing him though. I'm gonna just get rid of this because it's easier for me to just hold them up. Nick Karsha again. Uh, Michael Penn. Now we're getting into a bunch of stuff that I've heard of, but have never listened to. Uh, this had a burn CD in it. It was in the Tom Tom Club, which is... I believe the keyboardist and the bassist from the Talking Heads. What the hell is that? The Water Boys. Room to Room. No idea. It's gonna be a lot of stuff that I've been. I'm like, who the hell? And I know a lot about music and stuff. Oh, here we go. He said he was throwing in almost the whole level 42 collection so this is this is super cool because i've been looking at level 42 deciding whether i not i wanted to dive into level 42 so this pretty much makes up my mind for me Uh, 
the song on here. I think it's something about you. I'm not sure. But it was living rent free in my head. Dun, 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 dun. Level 42. Oh my god, this is so much level 42. It's awesome. This is the level best. It's a collection of, um, of their greatest hits. Level 42, the remixes. Guaranteed, level 42. Forever Now, level 42. Holy crap. I'm going to have to look and see how many level 42s in their discography aren't in there. I do have this. I'm not a big reggae fan at all. I kept this when I got it in that box, the boxes that um, Glenn gave me a while back. World Party. Goodness gracious. Oh, this is awesome. I have been interested in this van too and just never took the plunge. 10cc, he had mentioned that he was throwing in a lot of 10cc. Now we're getting to the, uh, um, what's his name from Hypnosis, the Storm Thurgison covers. Man, this is awesome. And, you know, I think even if I really, really dug these bands, I might not even need to uh, get remasters. Um, my days of getting things remastered blindly um, are kind of done because I find, I'm not even sure who that band is, I find that a lot of remasters sometimes are just brick walled and I don't like that, but you know, Godly and Cream. I've never heard of this band before. Some Japanese version of a Steve Lukather album. And yet another Steve Lukather album. These must be remastered somewhere because he is a big Toto fan. So, um, all right, we are going to, uh, oh, man, there's a lot of stuff that I have been meaning to buy that now I don't need to buy it because Brian Ferry. Oh, he said he was giving me all these sagas and, um, I own Worlds Apart and I've been looking for a lot of, uh, the other saga stuff, especially like the earlier ones. He said this one was kind of like a special cover. This is Generation 13. And he said, you'll understand. Maybe this isn't it. I thought it was Generation 13 that he was saying. Had a special, like, fold-out cover. Maybe that... Maybe that's what it was, just the first run was where it folded out like that. I'm not sure. Saga. I didn't realize Saga had this many albums. Holy crap. This is a lot of Saga. The Beginner's Guide to Throwing Shapes. This is a later one. 
or actually midnight 80s and stuff. There was, I can't remember the, they had a hit song on this album. I just cannot ever remember what song it was though. So this is cool because um, this is actually a newer print with this cover for the Worlds Apart. So I have the German cover with the older guy on it. Of course, in the 80s, this probably sold their albums a little better than having an old guy on your cover. Let me uh, move things. We still have quite a bit in this box. I am going to uh, take those. Got to even out this box because one side is getting too heavy for the other side. Some more Saga. Oh, and these are really early Saga. Silent Night. Images at Twilight. I believe this is their first album. Yep. And there's the cool thing. So... They had these songs where it was chapter four, chapter six. I believe there's eight of them that kind of go across telling a story. And on these, you have four, six, three, one, two, seven. And I believe Worlds Apart actually has one of them. Maybe not. I don't know where I put Worlds Apart. Oh well. We will we will see later. Oh no, here it is. Um this had chapter eight. Yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I wonder where the last one. Oh, sweet. Mr. Mister. Oh, this is a best of. That's cool. Mr. Mister. This is Go On. This album was, I believe, right before their huge breakout album, Welcome to the Real World. This had Curie and Broken Wings, which were big hits. I'm not familiar with that album. He did say there was going to be a lot of Alan Parsons projects. Wow. Honestly, except for some of those uh, things in the um, in the Prague Rejects thing, you know, just because I don't know what they are, um, everything else is is staying. This is. I'll stay in because I have been interested in getting Alan Parsons stuff lately, but I just did not know where to start. I think I have the first album, which um, which is called Tales of Mystery and Imagination. I used to love this album as a kid. Uh, Pyromania, I think, is the one song. There's a pyramid in my head, and it's underneath my head. Don't know why I loved that song as a kid, but what is this? I, Robot, I believe that is based on the Asimov book. And Alan Parsons Project, Tales of Mystery and Imagination, Edgar Allan Poe. Who is this? Pilot. Oh, it's just, I just saw the box set of Pilot, and I was wondering what the heck they sounded like. Now I will know. One more row, and then this video is done. Because I don't want you to sit here forever. Boz Skaggs. 
Okay, maybe I wouldn't keep Boz Skaggs. Who knows, though? Maybe. You never know. I don't think I've ever really listened to Boz Skaggs. Paul Carrick. I want to say there's a good, good bass player on here. I want to say Pino Palladino. I bet you $10. Maybe not. But Paul Carrick. Um, interesting enough, there is no bass player listed on here. I'm going to have to throw this out because there's no bass player. I'm just kidding. Cool. Mike in the mechanics, rewired, and plus the hits. What is this? I didn't even know this one existed. Actually, apparently, I don't know much about Mike and the Mechanics. I don't recognize any of these. I do, however, recognize this and this and this, because I have those three. Sweet! The Buggles. Oh, we're coming up to some goodness, like things that I knew were in here but I forgot about. The Buggles. Age of Plastic. Video killed the Radio Star. Sweet. Um, what the heck? Asia, Heaven on Earth. Oh, this is awesome. Because I do not have that Asia album. I have their first two. Um, I do not have any GTR. And, coming up, this is the, the thing that I was saying I knew was in here, but I forgot. Because I would kind of put him more next to the uh, prog bands for some reason. Maybe it's because he was in one of the greatest prog bands ever. But um, Steve Hackett. Some more Steve Hackett. I've never seen that album. I didn't even know that one existed. Highly Strung. I believe this is the one that Ian Mosley from Marillion plays on. Let's look. Let's find out. Thanks for giving me no information, Steve. What the hell? Okay, I guess I can't. Can't tell you. He just looks like a guy that you went to high school with, that you maybe got drunk with on the weekends, or, you know. But he was a really nice guy. This is awesome, because I don't own any Steve Hackett albums at all. This one, I almost picked up this copy, this version, uh, a little bit ago. But then I found a bunch of other stuff and was like, well, if I um, need an extra CD to get 10% off, then that'll still be there. Voyage of the Acolyte. That is his first album. I do have this on vinyl, but I rarely listen to the vinyl. This is awesome because I've never owned this. Except I did have it on vinyl at one point, but... Um, I think I got rid of it, sold it. Um, I sold a bunch of vinyl back in the mid 2000s. I want to say these are the exact same versions that I have of these two Studio UK albums, but I'll have to. I will have to check. Esquire, um, Nikki Squire, and Nigel McLaren. I am not familiar with them. What is this? What version is this? Robert Fripp. Exposure. I have never seen this version, though. What does this say? We 
weird. So it's this weird little digipack. Oh, these are the worst ways to have CDs ever. Where it opens like this and you have to pull them out from the side. At least these come in little sleeves. But that is just impossible to pull out. That's what she said. And then this booklet, this fantastic booklet, which I think is very similar to the other two discs for disc version that I have, but it's a cool version. And that is it for the first two boxes. I'm going to stop right there because this video has been super long and uh, we will stop at, um, at Bop and Bobby Fripp exposure. So that is video number one. Join me for video number two, the final uh, frontier, and we will see what else was in this. I got two more boxes that is about the equivalent of this, maybe actually even more. So thanks for watching and take it easy. Bye-bye.